Hey, welcome back to the Scout Tactical Channel. How are you doing? Got a good review for you this evening. The Eagle 128 backpack from Kelty. I have been grinning ear to ear since I got this thing. I waited nearly three months. I ordered it at US Cav, a good place. The first time I had shopped with them, it was back ordered. I knew at the time of ordering it. It took two and a half, three months to get it, but man, hey, just so you know, their price $309. Everybody else is about $450. So it was the cheapest price, but man, they had good service. They emailed me in 30 days, wanted to make sure I wanted to keep my back order, etc. They kept in communication, and lo and behold, it came out. So, this is the mother of all bug out bags. It is a backpack extraordinaire. I could not be happier with it. I love it. I will never part with it. This is a great piece of gear, and if you're watching this, you're gear people like I am, okay? I know that you are. Guys, I ordered a hunt. I, I owned a hunting store for seven or eight years, and I ordered about a million dollars every year worth of stuff to stock in that store. I like the gear, but I'm going to tell you, eh, don't take this the wrong way. But not all gear excites me anymore. I just handle it too much. It's like if you're a mechanic, you kind of lose the thrill of cars to a degree. You know what I'm saying? So this one turns me on. This is an awesome pack. I think the reason I like it is because it's so dang versatile. It'll do all kinds of stuff. I don't know a job that it couldn't adapt to. The word tactical, in my opinion, it just means you have a plan. You know, I work as a full-time police officer. I know that uh, there's a lot of military guys watching. We're getting some uh, guys from overseas watching too. There's a lot of different guys watch and gals watching the channel for different reasons. You may be a camper or a hiker a long distance trekker and backpacker, cross country guy, something like that. You may go tour Europe and try to hike across it. Do some big game hunting, elk, moose, bear, deer hunting, something where you're walking a long way in the west maybe in the Rockies. This is the bag for you. And I can use that blanket statement, this is the bag for you because it'll do whatever you want. It's adaptable. You know, I looked at the L.L. Bean White Mountain Pack, which I really liked, but it was a little too small for me. I looked at different packs, even Kelties, but I noticed on the backpack in the hiking industry, everything is you get what you get. Rarely are they customizable. Now, a couple of them have a detachable lid, as this one has and things like that, but this one's even more customizable. This pack lives life in its full extent like this as a 7,850 cubic inch, which is also 128 liter backpack. To the best of my knowledge, it's the biggest pack you can buy. I'm sure there's some custom guys with something bigger. But I've looked at REI, I've looked at Campmore, I've looked at Everly Stock, I've looked at a lot of brands and nobody has anything 7,850. Now Everly Stock has a few in the, a couple in the 7,000s. I think they're crane or sky crane or whatever was like 7200 i can't remember don't comment about it because uh, uh if you know the truth uh, i'm sure some guys are making big ones but i think this is the biggest pack you can buy the other cool thing is like i said it's adaptable this pocket comes off it's molly compatible see it's just woven on as you can see from the factory this pocket comes off same thing two side pockets come off and the lid comes off that's a huge fanny pack lid up here and it comes right off and it makes for a, another self-contained lid underneath it. So you can take this from $78.50 to about $62.50. Now that's cool. Pack is a little heavy. They use some heavy material on it. It's 11 pounds, 12 ounces with every side bag on it. Okay, empty. Okay, that's heavy. That's the only downfall I'm going to give you of the whole bag because I love it. I cannot think of a better bag right now. At 450, it's steep as can be. At US Cav at 309, now we're talking. Now it falls right in the line with a lot of packs. It's less than a lot of Everly stocks. It's less than uh, Mystery Ranch packs. Those things are ridiculous. It's, uh, it's a bad boy. The closest thing I could find in the mainstream to this was the Kilty, same manufacturer. Everybody knows that name by now. They have the Red Cloud 110 and the Red Cloud 90. Of course, this is a 128. This is made by Kelty, but it's not their mainstream line. It's not necessarily carried by all Kelty dealers. Even Campmore does not have it, and they're a big Kelty dealer. This is in their military line. So all my tag guys, my military guys, my soldiers, this is for you. But like I said, my hunters, my hikers, my campers, this is for you. 
my preppers, my bug outers, my bug inners, this is for you. This pack does what you need. So I put some gear in it tonight to kind of show it off to you, show you the features. We're going to go through it. It's going to take a couple minutes. But I want you to know that this pack is adaptable. You can upload it and download it just as much as you want. And there's gear missing out of this. After we go through it, I'm going to show you that there's stuff not even in here. And it still has room. I didn't fill it. I guess I could have. But it, it carries the weight well. I put this on. I got this last week. I've been wanting it, like I said, for about three months. I've been wanting it for a year. But I got it. I ordered it three months ago. I got it last week. I went to the deer lease on the opening of this deer season in Texas. We did a couple of deer gun reviews this week. Uh, last week, pardon me. So I took this with me to the deer lease. It's 2.4 miles to my deer stand from camp. So I put it on. I hiked there and back, and I did that on two different days. So I hiked 10 miles with the pack. That's a pretty good representation of how it's going to fit. If it, if it hadn't worn in or conformed to you in 10 miles or it's still killing you after 10 miles, it'll probably always kill you. If it falls in line and you wear it pretty well, then so be it. This pack felt good the first time I put it on. It instantly fits me. I'm 6 foot 225. It fits me. I've seen guys that are 6'2 and 6'3 wear these. You watch nothing fancy and a PFI dude use this if you watched Operation Red Skies, among others. This pack fits big guys down to medium guys. Okay, I'm six foot, I guess I'm average to large. This pack fits, so it feels great. It has a great suspension system. Let me go through what I had in the pack. It was, this thing is so huge that I could hardly fit it on camera. I had to add some camo to the backdrop, get a bigger cloth on the ground. This is crazy big, it's the biggest thing I had. Okay, so from the bottom to the top, on the very bottom, right here, you have molly, okay? What can you do with this? Well, this is not waterproof down here, but you can hang, uh, you can tie stuff to it, lash stuff to it. Really the weight should be more gear, uh, geared towards the top, in my opinion. It carries better. So down here you got your sleeping bag, uh, your sleeping pad, something like that, like a foam pad. Super lightweight, a pound or so. It's down here. Stuff like that, that's down here. Anything bulky but light, it's down here, okay? You have on top of that this, which is hard to see because the whole pack is this awesome Coyote Brown. Okay, this is like a flap, so it's a little catcher. You can stick in there a big jacket, a bulky item, or whatever. Adjust these straps and still keep it on your pack. Okay, so I like this. This is neat. The Rush 72 has a similar pocket that's kind of full length, but I like those stash pockets. It's just big and they can form to anything. In here is the sleeping bag compartment, okay, or the lower compartment. You can use it for whatever you want. On the sides, you see the two mesh pockets. I stuck a water bottle in here to show you. This is a 25 ounce stainless steel water bottle. It has room for two. Can you see that? Okay. It, it's got one in there and it's just, just cavernous. It dwarfs it. All right, sleeping bag thing. I fit a sleeping bag in here, no problem, and then some. Here's what we got. The Recon 4 sleeping bag, okay? which is an awesome 14 degree bag. Recon 4, Halo Recon 4, right? Sleeping bag's in there. Also in the pouch, I've got a pillow from Kelty, which is not one of the smaller camping pillows, and I've got the Inertia XL, Recon XL, sleeping pad, okay? Both of those and the sleeping bag in the sleeping bag pocket, no problems at all. So you can take all kinds of stuff. Now, would it take the military modular sleep system from the Army slash Marine Corps? Nope. I already have one. I've tried it. It's way too long. Okay. But you could put it in the main compartment and use the big, the bottom compartment for some of your other gear. But I'm telling you, it'll hold a lot. It'll hold most mainstream sleeping bags. But that big old modular system is just a little too big for it, in my opinion. Maybe you can squeeze it. Up top, in the front, you got a row of lashing points. You can do all kinds of stuff with that. You could lash a pad in between here or something like that if you wanted. You could lash water in between there, which was my plan. I use these little crappy carabiners just to hook on the little water pouches, stuff like that, so that it hangs on the outside. If it busts, it's not necessarily going to pour into my, sleep, into my backpack. I like the water on the outside. It makes me nervous on the inside. Okay, these two big pouches up front are not removable. They are stuck on the pack, okay? So, what's, what do I have in those? Here's what I did on them, guys. I put food, and, a cook system and food in, in mine. My thought was here, I would have first aid, 
a water thing, cooking system, food stuff, tools, uh, fuel for the stove, which is a little, uh, little MSR pocket rocket, everything on the front, in the front four pouches, okay? The reason is, and fire stuff in the top, excuse me. Reason is, all my stuff that I would get to pretty quick is on the outside. On the inside, I go bulky stuff and clothes. So that was my theory here. Faster you need to get to stuff, and I use that on every backpack. Faster you need to get to it, more it needs to probably be to the outside. Of course, if it's a crushable sensitive item or a one that can't take any water or, or climate, then tuck it on in. You know, do what you need to do on the inside. But in general, faster you need to get to it, more it stays on the outside. So, these pockets, like I said, not removable, okay? They got, everything has a pull cord, as you see. Okay, in here, tons of stuff, right? A full cook system. I've got a Sea to Summit sink. I've got a, and I'm stuffing stuff in there to show you. I've got a, uh, a uh, cook set with spices and what have you. I've got a GSI thermal mug. And I've got a whole, if it's in there, a whole GSI Inform Solo cook set and the stove in there with the utensils. So all of this fits in one pocket. Oh, there's some more utensils right there, Lexan Silver. So it all fits in this monster of a pack. And I love it. As you see, room to spare. I don't know, really. I think the thing's only rated to 80 pounds, and it would be nothing to put 80 pounds worth of stuff in here because everything fits. Other side, same thing, zipper pull. I pull it down, what's in there? I got a bunch of freeze-dried food. Okay, I got four of the uh, Mountain House freeze-dried food, just to show you. And these aren't the Pro Packs, which are the smallest with the air sucked out. These are just the normal ones folded in half. It fits four of them for me, right up front. So that's cool. I have a total of 12 freeze-dried meals in this bag. It's not even close to full. Tons of space. 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 cubes left. Tons of space left. And I've got clothes and everything. Okay, on the side, these pockets, they have a Velcro deal up here and a, and a, a splitter zipper so that you can get to anything in the pouch real easily. I like this, though this hood comes over so it's water resistant, but if it's really a blow and rain, it's gonna get in this pocket, something to think of. In here, I put a 96 ounce foldable Nalgene canteen, okay? And I put a big full-size first aid kit, which I like. First aid would be something I'd want to get to out in the front because it's easier to get to. And if it's a first aid situation, you're probably going to be struggling. You're going to need it. Even if it's not you, it could be one of your kids or one of your party members, and maybe you're a little frazzled to get them help. First aid kit. This is the, Ameri the Adventure Medical Kits, and this is the Hunter. This line has now become the Sportsman line, so they have the Bighorn, the Whitetail, the Grizzly. And the steelhead, I have a couple of those that you've seen in other videos. This is the uh, two or four or five years ago model Hunter. Same thing, just about. So as you see, it goes right in that pocket, no problem. I mean, I, I almost could stack a trauma kit or some other stuff on top of there. So tons of room, tons of room. Now, do you have to fill it just because it has the room? No, that's the disease that we have as gear guys and preppers and what have you. But you don't have to do that. In fact, it's best not to. I like to have extra room, as I've talked about in the bug out and the get home bag stuff, because that way if you have to take on somebody else's gear or pick up some extra gear on the way or, you know, battlefield gear or whatever you're doing pickups, you got room for it. I don't want to go into any situation with my pack already maxed out. Not only will it be heavy, but you can't expand and change your game plan as your situation changes. Okay, <clears throat> on the other side. Fuel canister. Big old tool bag, okay, ditty bag with tools, folding saw, shovel, all kinds of stuff. Not even close. Look at the space left over in this thing, right? I can hide a kid in this. Not that I'm a child smuggler, just kidding. Okay, so you see the side pockets are super big. Now, these would be great for food too, okay? You could load these up with food and as you finish them, you could then take it off the pack maybe. Leave it behind, use it for something else. Use it to carry tons of water in the side. I don't know. You can also take this off and it has molly straps, as you see. You can use this to run a rifle. Put the butt stock in here in the mesh pocket. Run the rifle up there. Strap it down with the included straps. They're already on the pack. Okay. So you could do that. This is a molly panel, this whole thing under this pouch. You could run like the 511 TacTech uh, uh, scabbard, is what I'm trying to say. 
they have that tear scabbard. I have it. It's on the, uh, which bag was it on right now? It's on the get home bag, which I showed y'all in the video on the 72 hour bag. You can put that scabbard right there. Run your rifle with your, with your water pocket or your mesh pocket still intact and have the scabbard holding the bottom of the rifle, or the barrel of the rifle, pardon me, with your rifle facing upside down. So with the muzzle down. Tons of, tons of possibilities. That's the beauty of this bag. You can do what you need to do, what you like to do. If you're a soldier, what are you doing? You're wanting tons of ammo, right? Food and ammo, you're good. Food and ammo and water. Comms, all kinds of stuff. You're more of a camper, maybe you're going signaling. Other tools that you might be practicing out there and stuff like that. Sky's the limit. You're a big hiker, uh, you may be lashing some stuff on. It's snowy, you can put your snowshoes on this thing, and on and on and on. Okay, most backpacks, have to go through the top, okay? Not this one. Of course, you can go through the top, no problem. But you can also go through the front. So that means if something's right here in the middle of the pack, or here, you don't have to dig through all your stuff, which pokes and prods you and scrapes you up and breaks your stuff and spills something and all that good stuff. So you can go through from the front. You do that with the zippers. And right here, everything has pulls, like I said, okay? Pull it open, and you'll see that it opens right up. It lifts back. What do I have in here? Fire kit, bug spray, okay? I also have uh, uh, some sunblock, some chapstick, here a full toiletries kit, sewing kit. Uh, I put in some hand sanitizers, some gold bond powder, toothbrush, wet wipes. Down here, shaving cream, soap stuff, shampoo, deodorant, and on and on and on. As you see, it takes all kinds of stuff. Three big mesh pouches in here. They go underneath these pockets, so they don't interfere with anything. What do you have under that? Mesh divider. Here you can put dirty clothes versus clean clothes. You can put a rain gear so that it's pretty fast to get to. Anything like that that you want separated, there it is. And it's not a solid panel, it's a mesh panel, which allows everything to breathe. Guess what? Right there, has zippers, okay? You open the zippers, you're into the mesh pouch, okay? Which is the main part of the backpack. Now in here, again, I still got thousands of cubes left in the top. I've shrunken it all down, cinched everything down to tighten the load up as I would when I was walking. But I'll show you, there's plenty of room. I just threw some stuff in to show you. Here's a big uh, pack towel from Sea to Summit. Right, huge dry sack, the biggest dry sack in my set with a full flannel, uh, I'm sorry, fleece jacket and pants. Okay, MSR, Katanen, uh, MSR, hello. Katanen Hiker Pro water filter full thing. LL Bean uh, pants and shirt. And another nearly the largest stuff sack. Survival kit. Food sack, nine more freeze-dried freeze-dried meals in the stuff sack. Okay. On the side, I've got a tarp. It has two awesome pockets with drawstring, as you see, inside to kind of keep a couple things up. Also in there, I've got a little lantern. Okay. Let me undo that. And I've got a, a comms bag, radio, charger, batteries, all this stuff. You've seen a lot of this stuff if you watch the 72-hour bag. Or the extended stay bag. So I got all that power stuff right in here so that it's put away, but it's in a little bitty pocket so that I know where it is if I need it. That's cool. Alright. So that's pretty much the main body of the pack. Let me show you the top. On the top, again, removable lid, but look at it. It's covered in molly, okay, all over. So up here, what are you running? You can run mag pouches, okay? You can run some type of radio pouch if you're a comms guy. You can run all kinds of stuff, range finder deals, ammo deals for precision rifle, ammo wallets. Uh, sky's the limit, man. You run whatever you want, it's your pack. But it has molly all over, and that's my point. So, let me zip this up so I can show you everything. It's going to be kind of strange now that the middle is empty. I left all the stuff over here. Okay, so big old hood, hooded lid. Now, pretty traditional. Bass text buckle there and there. Okay, lid opens up. What do I have here? Kelty Salata 2, 2 man 10. 
sits right on the top. Okay, here's the frame coming up, so it just kind of makes a little crater. I told you I have space left over. Two cinches for the collar. Look at this. Let me turn it where you can see it. Look at that. I didn't even get there. I stopped right about here on this path. It goes all the way up here. Tons of more space you see down in there. This is simply a cave of a pack. I love it. All right, this lid needs a little talking to because it's a detachable fanny pack. Up here, right, you pull the straps out, they're tucked underneath the mesh pouch. Can you see, there you go. They're tucked underneath this mesh pouch, which you can use, it has a zipper as well. Straps are here, becomes a fanny pack, okay? Also on the back, has a long pocket. I stuck some stuff in there. Flashlight. Glow sticks. Riding the rain pad. Petzl headlamp. This stuff is in there and it's got tons of room. The fanny pack is huge and I didn't even freaking use it. I put like five things in there, it was nothing. It also has these two pouches which are very strange. Never really seen anything quite shaped like them. But they go for water bottles. Where was that water bottle? So here's that water bottle from the side. There's where you're running your water bottle in here. Zips right back up. Swallows it. Fits the whole water bottle. Ooh. Okay, so this is cool. You could take this off and maybe this is the stuff you're running during the day. Maybe you're a hunter. So this is all back at your base camp. You're 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds of gear. This is with you during your hunt. Okay, what do we call a hunt in the uh, military? A mission or in law enforcement. So this is off with you on your mission. It comes off with fast tex buckles, okay, right there. Clip off two of them, take off this little uh, tether right there, it's just Velcro, and it comes off. The new lid is tucked in. The new lid is tucked right here. Watch this. There's the new lid. It unfolds, it goes over the front, it's flat, doesn't have a pouch, and it's Molly. The whole thing's Molly with a Velcro for your name type or whatever. Kind of a small Velcro. So that's cool. There's your other lid. It rides with the pack. You don't have to worry about it. So you got a detachable fanny pack slash survival kit on the top, and that's kind of what I would use this for. All my survival gear may be up here because it's quick to get to. My fire starter kit, something like that, because it's quick to get to. I can sandwich in a tent or whatever under here. Okay, additional foam pad, but I'd probably put that on the bottom. And then you're good to go. All right, to the bottom. Why the bottom? Because of this. This is a rain cover. It's integrated into the pack. I love it. I bought rain covers in the past. I always use a rain cover. Why would you want a rain cover on your pack? Because if you've ever been outdoors, it rains. Every time you want to have a good time in the south or the southwest or the southeast or the north or the northeast or whatever, you got some type of precipitation. Here, it never rains. It's always dry during the summer. And if you get outdoors, it starts raining. Some months it rains all the time. So never know wherever you live. Rain cover is always great. Also, what's another good use for that? This is in the bed of the truck, you're going down the dirt roads or whatever, or you're in some type of armor personnel carrier, maybe you're in Iraq, Afghanistan. Put that cover over there, it's keeping all the crap off your gear all the time. It's not the end of the world, real men live through dirt, I understand, but man, if you can keep your stuff clean and living for the next few years that you're out there, all the better. Don't tear it up. All right, I'll flip it, show you the suspension. Suspension is awesome, okay? Straps, curved, they come out, they have a load lifter system right here. You can lift those, if you see, the strap goes out. The purpose is to pull that in once you get in it and it pulls the top of the bag towards you and keeps you kind of tucked into this big old package. Remember, you could have 70 or 80 pounds on your back. This is what keeps it all cinched up. Huge padded area here. Main stays are aluminum, they run all the way through. I don't know why they're not covered here, but in my hiking experience, which was only 10 miles, I didn't feel them. It didn't touch. The pads are thick enough to keep you off of that. On the belt, same thing. Okay, huge, huge lumbar pack back there. Huge padded uh, belt back there. And it has a metal reinforced right here uh, stay that goes into the belt to keep it kind of in shape. As you see, you can pull that out and fold the belt better. Also, check this out. Now, not only is this comfortable and does this system cinch instantly when you pull on it, but check that out. It's got molly on both sides of the belt. Now what can you do over there? 
whatever you want. Maybe there's a little trauma pack right there with a tourniquet. Maybe you're in bear country and there's a 44 Magnum right there. Doesn't have to pull your pants down, now it's stuck right there. So it's a better weight distribution. Maybe it's a semi-auto pistol and on this side is your double mag pouch or something like that. Maybe flashlight multi-tool, okay? Maybe flashlight on the shoulder straps, maybe GPS on here. So the sky's the limit. If the Molly is there, at least it gives you the option to do something with it. Molly webbing adds weight, but it also enables customization, which is a good thing. So I love the thing. There's also a plastic sheet, some kind of super huge plastic sheet, all the way through the base. So this thing is rigid. It is as it is, even though it's internal frame. It's not as floppy as it looks. These flop. The rest, good to go. Now, what's not in this pack? All kinds of stuff. When you think about it, you probably just saw all that and go, man, he's got all kinds of crap in there. Okay, yes I do. But, notice that from a comms perspective, I had a little radio, some chargers, some batteries. What about signal flare or pin flare? What about a strobe? What about a PLB, personal locator beacon? What about a ham radio or some type of large radio? Your police handheld radio, your military radio. That stuff's not in there. What about defensive? Okay, what about a big sheath knife, a fixed blade? That was not in there, but I have them, obviously. You've seen them. What about a gun, handgun? What about a rifle? Not in there, okay? But it could be. What about your ammo? What about your spare mags? What about, and on and on and on, okay? GPS, all that stuff. Maps. The point is, of the gear in this bag, is to show you how huge the bag is. Because this is a bag review. This is not a go, a uh, bug out review. Although it has the gear. And to let you know, as any kind of law enforcement, military, or sportsman, or whatever, that this bag would probably work for you. Because it holds a ton of gear. Strangely, one little side note, right here it says Eagle 7850. That's the old designation. They used to be Eagle 7850. That is the cubic inches, but now everything goes in liters. The bag was clearly sold as the Eagle 128, and it's my understanding that the new ones say Eagle 128. This thing was brand new in the wrapper. I don't know why I got one that says 7850, but who cares? I love the bag. It's a little heavy. That's the only downfall. A lot of packs are coming in at five to seven pounds, but a lot of packs aren't modular, molly capable, and 7850 cubic inch. The more material, the more it weighs. So, bottom line, is this the pack for you? Absolutely. Take off the side bags, take off the big lid if you don't need all that and roll a 6,000 around and you're fine. You need a big mission, winter clothes, all that stuff, snowshoes, which I don't know anything about here in Texas. Put on your stuff, you can hold more gear. You need to go for a longer time, you can hold more food. Man, I would assume, I've got 12 freeze-dried meals in here. Like I said, I, I would assume you could hold 20? 25 of them? I don't know. Uh, you can hold whatever you want to, and that's the point. So, I highly recommend the pack. I want to thank you for watching. I'm thanking the subscribers that we finished month one. We're into month two, halfway in. Views are going great. Subscribers are going great. We're trying to get 100 by the end of the month, if you remember. So, please, if you like the channel, subscribe. Check us out on the web, scouttactical.com. Check us out on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash scouttactic. As always, thanks for watching.